CIET NCERT presents Audiobook of Mathematics for Class 7 Chapter 3 Data Handling Page 57 3.1 Introduction In your previous classes, you have dealt with various types of data. You have learned to collect data, tabulate, and put it in the form of bar graphs. The collection, recording, and presentation of data help us organize our experiences and draw inferences from them. In this chapter, we will take one more step towards learning how to do this. You will come across some more kinds of data and graphs. You have seen several kinds of data through newspapers, magazines, television and other sources. You also know that all data give us some sort of information. Let us look at some common forms of data that you come across. Table 3.1 Temperatures of cities as on 26, 2006. City, maximum, minimum. Ahmedabad, 38 degrees Celsius. 29 degrees Celsius. Amritsar, 37 degrees Celsius. 26 degrees Celsius. Bangalore, 28 degrees Celsius. 21 degrees Celsius Chennai 36 degrees Celsius 27 degrees Celsius Delhi 38 degrees Celsius 28 degrees Celsius Jaipur 39 degrees Celsius 29 degrees Celsius Jammu 41 degrees Celsius 26 degrees Celsius Mumbai 32 degrees Celsius 27 degrees Celsius Table 3.2 Football World Cup 2006 Ukraine beat Saudi Arabia by 4-0 Spain beat Tunisia by 3-1 Switzerland beat Togo by 2-0. Table 3.3 Data showing weekly absentees in a class. Monday, 3. Tuesday, 1. Wednesday, 0. Thursday, 5. Friday, 2. Saturday 4 where each symbol represents one child page 58 what do these collections of data tell you for example you can say that the highest maximum temperature was in Jammu on 26 2006 table 3.1 or we can say that on Wednesday no child was absent. Table 3.3 Can we organize and present these data in a different way so that their analysis and interpretation becomes better? We shall address such questions in this chapter. 3.2 Collecting Data The data about the temperatures of cities, Table 3.1, can tell us many things, but it cannot tell us the city which had the highest maximum temperature during the year. To find that, we need to collect data 
regarding the highest maximum temperature reached in each of these cities during the year. In that case, the temperature chart of one particular date of the year, as given in Table 3.1, will not be sufficient. This shows that a given collection of data may not give us a specific information related to that data. For this, we need to collect data, keeping in mind that specific information. In the above case, the specific information needed by us was about the highest maximum temperature of the cities during the year, which we could not get from Table 3.1. Thus, before collecting data, we need to know what we would use it for. Given below are a few situations. You want to study the performance of your class in mathematics, performance of India in football or in cricket, female literacy rate in a given area, or number of children below the age of five in the families around you. What kind of data would you need in the above situations. Unless and until you collect appropriate data, you cannot know the desired information. What is the appropriate data for each? Discuss with your friends and identify the data you would need for each. Some of this data is easy to collect and some difficult. 3.3 Organization of Data When we collect data, we have to record and organize it. Why do we need to do that? Consider the following example. Miss Neelam, class teacher, wanted to find how children had performed in English. She writes down the marks obtained by the students in the following way. 23, 35, 48, 30, 25, 46, 13, 27, 32, 38. In this form, the data was not easy to understand. She also did not know whether her impression of the students matched their performance. Page 59 Neelam's colleague helped her organize the data in the following way. Table 3.4 Table 3.4 The columns are Roll number Names Marks out of 50 Roll number Names Marks out of 50 1. Ajay 23 2. Arman 35 3. Ashish 48 4. Deepti 30 5. Fazan 25 6. Govind 46 7. J 13 8. Kavita 27 9. Manisha, 32, 10, Neeraj, 38. In this form, 
Neelam was able to know which student has got how many marks. But she wanted more. Deepika suggested another way to organize this data. Table 3.5 Table 3.5 The columns are Roll number Names Marks out of 50 Roll number Names Marks out of 50 3 Ashish 48 6 Govind 46 10 Neeraj 38 2 Arman 35 9 Manisha 32 4 Deepti 30 8 Kavita 27 5 Fazan 25 1 Ajay 23 7 J 13 Now Neelam was able to see who had done the best and who needed help. Many kinds of data we come across are put in tabular form. Our school roles, progress report, index in the notebooks, temperature record and many others are all in tabular form. Can you think of a few more data that you come across in tabular form? When we put data in a proper table, it becomes easy to understand and interpret. Try these. Weigh in kilograms at least 20 children, girls and boys of your class. Organize the data and answer the following questions using this data. 1. Who is the heaviest of all? 2. What is the most common weight? 3. What is the difference between your weight and that of your best friend? 3.4 Representative Values You might be aware of the term average and would have come across statements involving the term average in your day-to-day -day life. Isha spends on an average of about five hours daily for her studies. Page 60 The average temperature at this time of the year is about 40 degrees Celsius. The average age of pupils in my class is 12 years. The average attendance of students in a school during its final examination was 98%. Many more of such statements could be there. Think about the statements given above. Do you think that the child in the first statement studies exactly for five hours daily? Or is the temperature of the given place during that particular time always 40 degrees? Or is the age of each pupil in that class 12 years? Obviously not. Then, what do these statements tell you? By average, we understand that Isha usually studies for five hours. On some days, 
she may study for less number of hours and on the other days she may study longer. Similarly, the average temperature of 40 degrees Celsius means that very often the temperature at this time of the year is around 40 degrees Celsius. Sometimes it may be less than 40 degrees Celsius and at other times it may be more than 40 degrees Celsius. Thus, we realize that average is a number that represents or shows the central tendency of a group of observations or data. Since average lies between the highest and the lowest value of the given data, so we say average is a measure of the central tendency of the group of data. Different forms of data need different forms of representative or central value to describe it. One of these representative values is the arithmetic mean. You will learn about the other representative values in the later part of the chapter. 3.5 Arithmetic Mean The most common representative value of a group of data is the arithmetic mean or the mean. To understand this in a better way, let us look at the following example. Two vessels contain 20 litres and 60 litres of milk respectively. What is the amount that each vessel would have if both share the milk equally? When we ask this question, we are seeking the arithmetic mean. In the above case, the average or the arithmetic mean would be total quantity of milk divided by number of vessels which is equal to 20 plus 60 upon 2 liters which is equal to 40 liters thus each vessel would have 40 liters of milk the average or arithmetic mean am or simply mean is defined as follows Mean is equal to sum of all observations divided by number of observations. Consider these examples. Example 1. Ashish studies for 4 hours, 5 hours and 3 hours respectively on 3 consecutive days. How many hours does he study daily on an average? Page 61 Solution The average study time of Ashish would be Total number of study hours divided by number of days for which he studied which is equal to 4 plus 5 plus 3 divided by 3 hours which is equal to four hours per day thus we can say that ashish studies for four hours daily on an average example two a batsman scored the following number of runs in six innings 36 35 50 46 60 55 Calculate the mean runs scored by him in an inning. Solution Total runs is equal to 36 plus 35 plus 50 plus 46 plus 60 plus 55 which is equal to 282. To find the mean we find the sum of all the observations and divide it by the number of observations. 
Therefore, in this case, mean is equal to 282 upon 6, which is equal to 47. Thus, the mean runs scored in an inning are 47. Where does the arithmetic mean lie? Try these. How would you find the average of your study hours for the whole week? Think, discuss and write. Consider the data in the above examples and think on the following. Is the mean bigger than each of the observations? Is it smaller than each observation? Discuss with your friends. Frame one more example of this type and answer the same questions. You will find that the mean lies in between the greatest and the smallest observations. In particular, the mean of two numbers will always lie between the two numbers. For example, the mean of 5 and 11 is 5 plus 11 divided by 2, which is equal to 8, which lies between 5 and 11. Can you use this idea to show that between any two fractional numbers, you can find as many fractional numbers as you like? For example, between 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 4, you have their average 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 4 divided by 2, which is equal to 3 upon 8. And then between 1 upon 2 and 3 upon 8, you have their average 7 upon 16, and so on. Try these. 1. Find the mean of your sleeping hours during one week. 2. Find at least five numbers between 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 3. You were just listening to the audiobook Mathematics for Class 7. Narrator Gaurav Marva. Assistance in Production Samya Malik. Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary. Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India.